Hi, welcome back. Uh, as you can see, I've finished all the, the badges. Uh, I mentioned yesterday there's 20. There's actually only 18, but I had 20 barrels, but there's 18 guns. Uh, the rest of them went together all okay. One thing I did mention was you couldn't use uh, the sword and irons with uh, an extension cable. That's only true if, like me, your extension cable was broken and didn't work. So there's no reason why what I said was true. What I did find though was when the sold on iron I used, I picked this one because it had a really nice fine tip and it went up to quite a high temperature. But the, the heat was very inconsistent through the tip and I had a lot of trouble getting some of these to actually solder because the heat wasn't transferring properly. So what I did was I dug up an older one which I think is a lot higher wattage uh, and this consistently uh, soldered. Within a second or two the heat went right through the gun into the solder and melted it. So this was the way to go but like I say the tip's quite big but it did a better job than the smaller one so uh, we'll get on to other components of the, the gun now so we'll do some paper cutting okay on to cutting the base plates now i mentioned there was a few different uh, methods to do this uh, first method i'll show you it's not my favorite i don't get very good results from it but essentially what you do is you actually just cut cut all the way around using the blade you don't want to do this in one uh, one motion you want to go around a few times I find the blade it's hard to keep it on line because although it's, you think the paper is quite uniform, you actually get hard bits within the, the surface of it or inside it and it kind of throws the, the blade out. And, uh, yeah, it's, I don't get very good results this way. I find the blade actually raises the edge of the paper as well. So you might have to go around two or three times. As you can see we're starting to get through now. I actually should put in a new plate as well. You can see, just because you're continually working it, it, it gets kind of ragged. I'm sure more experienced builders than myself can do this in very easily, but it just doesn't work for me. So that's a creed. It looks pretty tight to be honest. Uh, yeah, not my preferred method. Yeah. 
take our fridge. Okay, so that's the first method. Uh, like I say, it doesn't really work for, for my style, uh, but I'm sure others get good results. My preferred method for cutting out small circles, uh, just separate these, make it more manageable, is to actually go round and slice it. And then when you do it, you just keep it working your way around, either moving position of the knife or moving position of the part. And because you're slicing the paper, you get a far cleaner uh, cut rather than trying to draw a good point round. Uh, admittedly, so this. The point of this blade's a bit warm, so I should have been able to do it a bit tidier than uh, the, I'm mindful that I can't get too close and block the view as well. And then that's that's it really just keep working your way around. As you can see, this method is very time consuming. So. Okay, I'll just separate the part. <coughs> you have to watch using tweezers as well because you, you, you can dent the surface of the paper. to put this one in a less accessible area just because it's, it's not looking too flash. Almost that. Yes. You can see it dead in the middle as long as I keep that's covered, so as long as I keep away from the edges, uh, it'll be okay for this part. Oops. So that last bit to go. So that's it, not too bad. As you can see, big difference compared to uh, my non-preferred method, if you like. So the last method, and I've, I use this quite a lot on small holes, around about for two mil and, and below. Uh, I'll show you for two mil and below. And what I use is a piece of brass tube. So what I've done is just by pure luck the internal diameter matches the diameter of that. So by grinding or sanding or filing this outside edge onto a bevel into the inside edge, we essentially get a small punch. So let's try that. I'll have to block the camera because I need to look down, down the tube to make sure I'm centerized. So, with it, centered, with it centered over the hole, as you can see, it's punched right through. 
probably didn't need as hard a hit as that. And then just to free it, just push your corner, grab it, and there you go. Much quicker, very clean cut. The only problem is you might get two or three uh, stamps and then you have to go and, and tidy up the edge and just sharpen it up again because the cutting edge is the actual inside of the tube and all you've done is relieve the outside to put a sharp edge on it but yeah I'll do the, the rest of them uh, using this okay so that's all the uh, base plates stamped out so what we need to do now is uh, on the, the edges of the paper, we want to uh, darken them to make the same colour as the surround. So there's a couple of different ways to do this. Quickest and easiest way is to use one of these uh, pit pens from Faber Castell. They're very good. They, the ink doesn't bleed through the paper, so you can just do the edges. Uh, without worrying about bleeding. It does leave them a wee bit shiny so what I do is I use this where I've got two edges to glue together uh, because the PVA glue uh, moisture doesn't affect the ink either so uh, that's a good way of covering the edges it's going to be uh, glued together. So just working from the back side it's a bit difficult because I'm uh, for the camera but you just run it round. So. Okay, so that's that. And just that last edge. And there we go. It's all. Uh, all painted up so no white edges showing. Uh, that's a quick and easy method. The other way and what I typically do the most uh, for exposed edges that won't be glued is just to use a cheap uh, watercolour set. Uh, oops. As you, you see <laughs> Don't use any other colours except the black. So we'll do that one now as well. And I'll do the rest with the black. So just so just uh, load up the brush with water. Once you get going it, it's it's pretty easy. Uh, just getting the I guess the block of uh, pigments moving initially. But typically that's it. Okay. Okay, no, just... and, and always come in from the back side so if you if you do slip uh, you don't cover any. This isn't too bad based on what it is. But, uh, and again this is hard trying to do it for the camera. Normally it would be very close to my face. I like the watercolour because it's not like a black black so it matches the, the printing a lot better. Because the printing itself is not a deep black, it's more of a muted grey type colour. And that's it. So, that's all the edges painted. You don't want to leave white edges or uncovered or coloured edges. It just detracts from the model, I think. So, I'll get the rest of these done and then we'll move on. Okay, we'll have a look at the gun shields next. So as I mentioned uh, previously, I'm only going to use the front. Uh, this is the back side, it would be folded to it, I'll just use these ones. 
So what we have to do here is cut out uh, the gun opening. Uh, there's a line here which would be I guess the sight, I don't know. I won't bother with that, I'll just make the cut for the gun. So the barrels are slightly wider than the hole, but I'll start with the uh, what's shown marked and then enlarge it until we get the gun. I believe it sits about midway at the, the thick section. So to do that, what I've done is I've, I've made a couple of little chisels from uh, old worn blades where I've ground it down, made it straight across there and then relieved the back of it so I've got a, sh a sharp edge here. Uh, and the same for this one. So it's very thin at the tip, uh, but it should slice through the, the paper very easily. So let's put them into a into a handle and we'll we'll give that a try. So I, just, I think it's it's wider one will be the way to go. So the way to do it is uh, just go vertically down on the edge here. And you can actually feel it like slice the paper. Just keep on working around. I'm not sure if you can see that line there, that must be for the operator to sight through. But uh, I'm, I'm just going to leave that. I don't know if you can pick up, you can actually hear a slice of paper as well. It's a little bit to the end there. Uh, I'll just make a V shape if I can. And uh, so that should be it. Just see if we can get the, the barrel to go through. It's not too bad actually. And there we go. So hopefully you can see that. So it's pushed the paper out a wee bit. So what I'll do is for the next one, instead of cutting on the line, I'll just cut to the other side of the line and I'll give a bit of relief uh, for the slightly thicker bottom. So I'll go and do all these next. Okay, so what I've done now is cut all the holes out for the gun barrels and then I've given a spray of uh, Tamiya Natal Black. Uh, flat black is just too dark compared to the print. So the NATO black's quite a good, uh, reasonable match for it. Doesn't stand out so much. So what we'll do is, uh, we'll cut these out now. So the back sides we don't need, but the two fronts will keep. So, do if we can get up to the line. the blade against the rule, but taking into account the bevel, you'll get a square cut. And again, just a, a few, uh, a few strokes to, to cut through, rather than do it in one hit. So we'll keep this going. Let's work up to the line. I always put the ruler on the part side, so if you slip your blade, you're not going to damage your part. I 
should have a new blade out for this one. Two cuts should do it. But... Okay. And then we'll just work our way down. Try and keep it as square as possible. This part, so we'll go to the, the next one. There we go. So I don't know if the camera shows, but uh, there are a little bit of a, a bend on them, or a round on the corner, so. Uh, We'll sort that out once we've got them freed up. Okay, this one. So that's two. So you might be able to make out that there's a bit of white in some of the corners. So what we do there is we just nip the corner off. Be careful not to damage this. So that's it. Oops. So what we'll do is uh, go to painted back side, painted front side, and then we'll edge color the same way we've done with the, the watercolor paints. And that's it. So I'll do this one after, and then I'll cut the rest of them free. And that will give us for 18 gun shields. Right, we're on to the, the gun mounts now. So what I've done is I've trimmed the top one here and the bottom one there. Because what I've done is then transferred the fold lines so I can do all in one hit rather than individually. And the, that, that transfer line corresponds to these fold lines here because these will be bent into U-shapes with the gun barrel mounted between them. So by transferring the lines across, I'll do the next action now, which is to use, use this thing, I don't know what it's called, it's like an embosser. So what we do, takes a bit of time to line up, try and get to the center of the ball. So what this does is it crushes the fibers down and creates a bit of a space so when you fold this up uh, the paper's got somewhere to go. See that one, and then we'll do the same on the other side. So, what we have now is a bit of a groove right on the back side of the fold line. This will fold up, that will fold up and then these two edges should come together. If you don't do that, when you fold like a 90 degree, the paper bunches up in this area, makes it very springy. You 
you know, and see two bus through this other side. So now I'll just couple these out and then uh, fold them up and then we can glue them to the swivel which will be the next the next task. Actually I'll do that now. I'll do one and then you can, you'll get an idea. Keeping them all together uh, you can do a lot of cuts at, at one time. So we'll cut these all to, to length on one side. And then on the other side. Okay. Some parts you need to uh, just think about how you're going to do the cuts. Uh, depending on the shape, some cuts are easier to do first. Or if you do some cuts first, it will interfere with uh, the following cuts. So, this one's a pretty simple shape, but just kind of plan your plan your cuts. So probably block, blocking your view here. I'm just using this chisel shape one again. Bends very easily. So now we have. Just trying to get you can actually see even with that bits in there, the papers kind of started to move apart. There you go. So. We'll have a post on here and then the gun bar will sit between here. Like that. Okay. Okay. I wasn't happy with the way these uh, gun pivot points uh, supports folded with the paper the way it was. So I had a, a bit of a rethink. And what I've come up with is if you get some uh, thin super glue or CA glue and actually place it here, it turns the paper almost into like a plastic card and it makes it a, a lot stiffer and, and keeps its uh, shape together better. So I'll let that one go off. Uh, here's my prepared area. And also, I guess, off camera, you can cut these out a lot neater. But this has been stiffened with the CA. And what you get is here's the onion mount down. So as you can see, the paper's kept its shape. I'll get the old one compared to the one just with no strengthen, strengthening from the uh, super glue. So you can see the paper start to delaminate and it's also still quite springy. Whereas the one with the center uh, solidified with the CA glue, it's keeping the shape better and the paper is staying in one piece. So what I'll do is 
will go through and just apply say to all the center bits. I could go up and do the whole thing but I'll just keep it to here because that seems to, to work a lot better. Okay, so with that being said, uh, the next video we'll do the the top of the pivot point, the pedestals and the bridge block and then uh, final assembly and that should be it. Finished with that.